Yesterday I brought up the second chapter of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. And we talked about Sutra 2.1. And Patanjali introduced something called Kriya Yoga to us. Of the second chapter introduces us to this process of how to do this Kriya Yoga. And it centers around eliminating the causes of human suffering. So this, this text, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, this text is just brilliant. And in all reality, it, it takes lifetimes to practice all the teachings that he gives us. In the 196 sutras, they are, there is so much brilliance and so much wisdom contained there that one lifetime is barely enough to even be introduced to the topics and begin to understand how they could fit into your, into your life. So I know that reincarnation isn't a topic we've brought up yet, but it's certainly on my list of things to um, ponder and discuss and meditate on with you in the near future. But reincarnation is so important because the practice of yoga, attaining the end goal, doesn't happen in one lifetime. It doesn't happen in 10 lifetimes, according to yoga philosophy. It doesn't happen in 100 lifetimes, according to yoga philosophy. So don't get too bogged down on that concept yet, but the fact that you're here right now studying yoga, practicing meditation, which is yoga, you're not on your first go-round. And there is so much to work on as a human, as a human being on this planet. So much to do. And Patanjali gives it to us in this little condensed manual for life. So now we're introduced to the five causes of human suffering. So yet another very, very juicy and inclusive teaching that we can use to make our lives better. And once we figure out how to do it, we then help others do it. That's the path of the spiritual warrior. We use our own life as the testing ground and figure shit out. And once we figure it out, then we teach shit to other people and help them do it. Good morning. Reach your highest. Hi. Good to see you. Hey, Ion Sound. Hey, if anyone wants to hear some amazing hand pan and etheric yogic sounds, go to this ion underscore sound. His page is awesome. So the five causes of human suffering. Yeah, what are they? Well, here they are. <laughs> They're called the kleshas. The things that make us suffer in life. Avidya, ashmita, raga, dvesha, and abhinivesha. Okay, got it? All right, class over. See you tomorrow. <laughs> so avidya, ignorance, lack of awareness, causes suffering. Ashmita, false sense of our own identity, who we think we are, who we think we're supposed to be, causes suffering. Raga and dvesha, so Raga, I'm gonna give you a hint. You've heard me talk about something called non-attachment all the time, almost every single day. Vairagya. So Raga is a form of major suffering in life. Raga means attachment. Or it can be translated to attraction. And Dvesha is the opposite, repulsion. Attraction and repulsion are causes of suffering. So let me just again temper this by saying this is like master's level work here. This is advanced yoga. If we're working to eliminate our attractions and repulsions, that ain't easy. However, that does eliminate suffering in life. <laughs> I'm a Sanskrit scholar. You didn't know? Yeah, right. It's just fun to practice. I lay up at night and I just say raga, dvesha, abhinivesha. It's fun. And the fifth cause of suffering, abhinivesha. And this is attachment to our body or fear of death. Fear of the unknown, fear of leaving the physical realm. There's lots of taboo around death. And the more we ponder death and understand death and become friends with the transitory process, the journey that we will all take, the less suffering we have, the more we will be able to let go. Being okay with things happening and being okay with things not happening 
is true power and true peace. Talking about how to attenuate the kleshas. Now, attenuate means to weaken them and ultimately eliminate them. And meditation is a huge part of that. Specific techniques, specific intellectual pursuits, specific ways to analyze our habits and our habitual thought patterns. So it's a lot of psychology. Yo the Raja yoga is a lot of mental work, a lot of psychology, understanding how our mind and then emotions work. That's the whole first half of the second chapter. And then, as I mentioned yesterday, the second half of the second chapter, we're introduced to the eight limbs, Ashtanga yoga. We got a lot of work ahead of us. You guys strapped in? Buckled up? Find your meditative seat, please. Let's do some breath work. Some subtle breath work. Not the Wim Hof type of breath work that everyone's crazy about. So am I, actually. Some pranayama. So please sit tall and let the body become soft except for the spine. Lift the crown of the head towards the sky. Let the face soften, let the hands rest on the knees or in the lap. Slowly begin to deepen the breath and smooth it out. So the goal here is sama vritti, the same movement inhaling and same movement exhaling. Now when we say the same movement, we need the same quality of the breath for the inhale and the exhale. If somebody were to be listening to you breathe, it would be indistinguishable whether you're taking an inhale or an exhale. See if you can refine the inhale and exhale such that they're the same. They sound the same, they feel the same quality and intensity. Constrict the throat gently for ujjayi breath. And investigate your lungs and see if you're taking full advantage of the lung capacity. Use the physiology of your body to take in as much oxygen and take in as much prana as possible. Notice the collarbones will lift and then they will fall, but don't let the shoulders lift and fall. Keep the shoulders relaxed the entire time. Feel the two streams of air entering the body through either nostril. And envision those two streams meeting at the top of the nose or the bridge of the nose at the top of a triangle. Left nostril and right nostril meet at the top creating a triangle of energy, the focal point, gathering of prana. We call this prana dharana. We're focusing and gathering and intensifying energy. Have the intention to move that focal point back into the head, into the midbrain. And so when the inhale occurs, the two streams of prana are now entering through the nostrils and targeting the middle of the brain.
At the top of each inhale, introduce a short retention of the breath, holding the breath with full lungs just for a few seconds, allowing that prana to gather even more intensely during the retentions. Now re release the breathing technique and just be still and allow that light or that consciousness that we've built to expand. Allow it to expand so it encompasses the head and the heart together. The third eye center is our command center, our seat of clarity and navigation for life. The heart is the, in certain traditions, considered to be the seat of the soul. So when we optimize our command center and optimize our connection to soul, we can then take control of the kleshas, the causes of suffering in our lives. Our place in the world becomes understood. Our dharma is revealed to us. Which at its highest sense for all of us is a microcosmic reflection of the entire universe. For the next moment or so, rest in the knowledge that we are mini-verses of the multiverse. And without us, the universe would not evolve. It evolves through us. Let's prepare for chanting Om together, please. Take a full inhale, breathe in all the way, and open the mouth and exhale. Now prepare, inhale. Slowly open the eyes. So perhaps at some point in the future we can make these more interactive somehow. I'm not sure if the Zoom platform would be appropriate or something where I can 
see your faces. It'd be nice to have that. Have a beautiful Sunday, everyone. Namaste.